Hey guys, happy new year, happy 2018, and today is Monday, January 1st, 2018. Welcome to your weekly angel card reading of Beacons of Angel Light. I am coming to you here from my new location, my new place. I moved, so soon we'll have beach videos, but today it's cold, wet, and rainy. So I am inside, and... Um, we have a lot of stuff going on like today tonight there's a full moon in cancer it's also Monday it's the first of the year lots of new beginnings and so I'm using a brand new deck that I've only used on one other occasion to inaugurate the year I'm inaugurating a deck and it is the animal tarot cards by Doreen Virtue and Rally Valentine there's a lot of meaning in the attitude that animals carry out in their existence and there's a lot to be learned from them. Um, I've been spending a great deal of time with my turtle Penelope today. She's loose and out and about and exploring the new spot. And I've been wary of her because she wants to hang out between my feet like a dog or a cat. It's really cute. Um, and here you see that's our new fish, Patrick. Um, you know, I, I figured... Maybe Patrick wanted to be featured. Um, and it's appropriate because we're doing the animal tarot this week. So um, I'm going to shuffle the cards. Keep in mind these are brand new. So I may have to shuffle longer depending on what I'm told. Um, psh, psh, psh. Yeah, so also while I'm shuffling... oh. Yep, two cards at once. They said that that was intended. I'll keep these aside because they jumped out like that. <laughs> um, but also we have... That's not it. Uh, all of the planets are going direct tomorrow, January 2nd. We have uh, all of the planets direct for us in until... Um, March 8th, uh, the first one to go back into retrograde is going to be Jupiter. We'll cross that bridge when that happens, but um, here we go. Yeah, so all of the planets going direct. This is, I mean, in spiritual terms, if you don't know what that means, which one is it? Okay. Um... Oh my goodness. Yeah, so when we have the planets going direct or in retrograde, it doesn't mean that they change their direction or their flow in orbit. It does not mean that. What it means simply is it's like a caucus race, if you will. And we're orbiting around the sun, right? All of us at different distances, and it takes us different amount of time uh, time to, uh, to complete the circumference, if you will. So in that time, sometimes the planets appear to be ahead of us in the caucus race. And so right now, planet Earth is behind and all of the planets in their orbit are in front of us, giving us their energy from the front side. We're receiving it from planet Earth's front side, which does make a difference whether if we're receiving it from the hind side or the front side. And currently all of the planets have progressed and advanced us, so to speak, in the caucus race, even though it is another race, but that's just kind of how I view it and compare it to like a political race or, um, you know, even like the race in Alice in Wonderland when they were all trying to run around and get dry and just the ocean keeps coming and wetting them and they're running around in circles aimlessly. You know what I mean? Like, it's not aimless, but um, that's what I like to compare it to. So there isn't really race. All right, we've got really interesting cards here. And the vast majority of them did jump out. So we'll start off with the ones that jumped out. It was three of them. Two at first and then another one. Uh, so the first two that jumped out, this is... Yeah, they're saying it applies even though they're back to back. We got lots of winter cards, guys. Uh, the two of winter, the Datsun dog, 
Procrastination and worrying what others will think is blocking you from making a decision. You're torn between your own desires and someone else's. Follow your inner guidance. So I don't know if the glare is really bad there, but I'm trying to show you the Datsuns. Little wiener dogs. So I'm going to place it here for now. And... Um, let's see if that works. Um, long or short haired, which will it be? In either case, Dotsons are sweet dogs known for being energetic and devoted, but also a tiny bit stubborn. Because of this, they can alert you that you're taking too long to make a choice, that before you can represent a, you can, yeah, represent a great opportunity, they could let it slip by due to indecision or overanalysis. You're at a standstill, a stalemate, and your procrastination about choosing is really getting in your way. Ask yourself, what is holding me back? Often you're torn between what you want and what someone else wants for you. Listen to your heart. Most of the time, the correct answer is to follow your own, your own personal guidance rather than to do what others think you should do. It's a compromise. If it's necessary, then start working on arrangements that will satisfy both parties. Whatever it takes to get things done, just do it. Look, because it's time. Right now, all of the planets have aligned for us and they're ahead of us. So now we also got the two, sorry, the three of winter. Um, and this one's rose-breasted, gross beak. Sadness is a part of life, but you don't have to endure it alone. You may need a little time to heal, but once you work your way through the emotions, you'll be stronger than before. The need to heal emotional wounds, sadness that fades with time, getting comfort from others. When you're a human or a part of the animal kingdom, sadness is part of life. Don't go through the healing process alone. Reach out to those who love and care for you. Let others who have experienced what you're going through offer their compassion and wisdom. You may need to take a little time to be sad, but make sure you begin to work your way through the emotions soon. You'll heal this loss, and in doing so, you'll be stronger than ever before. This card can also indicate a need for you to be there for someone who's hurting. Rose-breasted grosbeaks are beautiful birds with a red crest that's almost heart-shaped on their chests. For this reason, they also represent healing from heartbreak and emotional pain. A reminder that time heals all wounds and joy will come back into your life in due course. The grosbeak asks you to practice forgiveness of yourself and others and to release the past so if you find yourself um, in a state of sadness it's because you're living in the past and not currently enjoying the present okay and if you find yourself in a state of tension and fear it's because you're living in the future and your uncertainty and that's what drives the fear you're not enjoying the present. The power that resides inside of you is only available to you in the here and now. And may I reiterate that the present is equally uncertain as the future, okay? Because the present is constantly unfolding. I say now, and it's different than when I say now and now. 
So um, now we have the Prince of Autumn, and it's a seahorse. Um, it is important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. Autumn, where's autumn? The prince, he's regal. Oh, there we go. Okay, seahorse going about things with an abundance of caution and patience dedication to a cause, being watched over and protected. The message of this card is twofold. First, it indicates the need to make a very detailed plan before moving forward. A very, um, once this plan is in place, it asks you to take immediate action, to get as much accomplished as possible. Which part of the message is intended for you depends on where you are in your progress. If your plan of action is vague or non-existent, the seahorse asks you to take action, to take no action until you have one. If you already have the plan, then now you're effectively being told, get busy now, it's important to have the eye for details and to put other people first. The seahorse can represent a person who is trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. He's always prepared, and if he comes in to help with your project, you can expect it will go flawlessly. He is no stranger to hard work and getting things done. However, he doesn't race to the finish line. He takes his time in order to make sure everything is perfect. Because of that, he's probably not the right guy for you if you're in a rush. Consider asking the thoroughbred horse, a.k.a. the Prince of Winter. However, if you have time and want everything, just so he's your man. Seahorses have been around for millions of years, yet have changed very little. They are slow swimmers and camouflage themselves among seaweed and coral, reflecting the dependability and caution aspect of this card. Another fascinating fact about seahorses is that the males gestate and give birth to the babies. Hence, they symbolize excellent fathers as well as alternative roles such as um, stay-at-home dads and working moms. Seahorses have an exoskeleton, a bony skeleton on the outside of the body, which symbolizes protection, much like how your guardian angel surrounds and protects you. Now we have the seven of winter. And this is the magpie. Caution will help you avoid the loss of valuables, including non-material resources, such as time or peace of mind. Be aware of the results of your actions as well as what others might be doing behind your back. Sorry, I had to see it. It's a seven of winter. A situation that isn't what it appears to be, the need to look for a better solution to a problem, the loss of something valuable. Things aren't always what they appear to be because of that. Even best laid plans may be unlikely to succeed. 
Time brings clarity to most situations, but the magpie can give you a heads up right now that the plans you have require another look. Think of, think of this as a way of universe saving your time. It's not intended for you, and so it's being cleared out of your way. And that way you save your time and energy. Magpies can also indicate that your current situation might cost you something important. And it could be material, like a ring or money or non-material, like peace of mind. The key to avoiding such a loss is to be alert and aware to the results of your actions, as well as what others might be doing behind your back. Magpies are beautiful and fascinating birds. With one of the most complex vocabularies of any in the animal world, they are also rather unpredictable. Therefore, their symbolism varies from culture to culture. Some see them as good fortune. And we would argue that this card's message is positive in that its purpose is to help you get on the right track and be successful. The angels are making my face itch, I keep itching. <clears throat> because magpies are scavengers who likely, they like shiny objects, and who doesn't? They're also known for taking small items that sparkle to build into their nests. The whistle in the magpie's nest is heaven's way of alerting you that your current plans need improving. You're distracted by something when your focus should be elsewhere. We got the Ace of Summer. And I don't know this deck very well, but I know the Aces are always the best. Ace of Summer. The Dove. This is the beginning of a new emotional experience for you. It may be the first blush of romantic love, the rebirth of a current relationship, or the, or the awakening of spiritual gifts and insights. And I honestly believe it to be all of this combined because today marks a new cycle of a full moon in Cancer, which is the one of all of the deepest emotions. And so it's like a spiritual, emotional cleanse that we're currently undergoing. And that's what this card is referencing. And it's the Ace of Summer. So let me go ahead and look that up. Well, let me show you. It's beautiful. Dub. Love. A sense of hope peace, purity, and innocence, the divine. The first three cards of Summer Suit feature birds that symbolize the progression of love and romance. Like all cards in tarot, they also have their own individual secondary meanings. The dove is the first blush of love, the heart's initial fluttering upon meeting someone special, but can also represent the beginning of a new emotional experience or could be romantic or platonic, or even the rebirth of a current relationship. In also the awakening of spiritual gifts, insights, a new home. Uh, the dove is universal sign of peace, love, and the divine, and is closely associated with Mother Mary, as well as spiritual messages from Jesus or God. A dove's cooling is meant to bring us peace and calm, the symbolism of the onset of love and romance is due to the connection to Venus, the Roman goddess of love, who is often depicted with doves nearby. And then our last card for the week, the Queen of Autumn, the Belgian hare. You'll be given advice that's both practical and creative, and it should be followed precisely. Focus only upon the positive in the energy in every situation or person. That's the what? 
queen. The queen. Here she is. The Belgian hare. Caring for and nurturing other people, being a great parent. A talent for making money, balancing practicality with luxury. The appearance of the Belgian hare symbolizes receiving excellent advice, words of wisdom, both practical and creative, and should be followed precisely. Taking time to nurture and care for those you love is important right now. Seek out the very best in every situation, person, or thing. Focus on that and ignore the rest. Don't hesitate to handle things yourself if you feel so inclined. No, you know best what to do anyways. The Belgian hare represents a truly exceptional person. She's thoughtful, caring, and artistic, and she has a great business sense. She's also down to earth, but has an eye for high style luxury. And at the same time, she's always willing to help you. But unlike the swan, the queen of summer, who gives too much, the hare maintains a very good boundary. She has the gift for being able to make anything or anyone more elegant. She's also an excellent mother. The hair is an ancient symbol of creativity, fertility, and abundance, which, by the way, is your birthright. So, naturally, Belgian hares, a domestic breed, are known for having lots of babies. They're also strong, resilient, that unlike their rabbit cousins that can, can't fend for themselves shortly after birth, Wild hares are often chased by predators and thus symbolize surviving via quick thinking and alertness. This fact also means that they're associated with humility, with the message to never underestimate those around you. Hares are a traditional sign of good luck, so this card can indicate wonderful opportunities are coming your way. So guys, that's your weekly reading for the beginning of 2018. Happy New Year! I love you, love yourselves, love everybody around you, and if you haven't already, click subscribe and share the video. Mwah.